Hello my friends from all over the world. All of you who are struggling to recover from stroke, I wish to throw some light for you on lesion, on cerebellar switch off and spasticity as understood in Vasa concept. I wish to bring it to your knowledge that for over a century patients of stroke are struggling to get back to pre-morbid state. I wish to put a full stop to the suffering of stroke patients of the world and put them on the road to true recovery to reach to pre-morbid state so that they do not have to suffer as the ex-American president Woodrow Wilson did who suffered his stroke in 1919 and Senator Mark Kirk who had a stroke in 2012. Most patients have useless spastic arm and hand hugging the abdomen or chest. They need to support, they need support to stand, to walk and to climb stairs. It is needless to say that despite best treatment, patients end up as disabled, dependent and handicapped. It was hard for me to understand why in this 21st century, after spending huge amount of money in gait training for hours and hours, patients land up being disabled and ambulate in wheelchair. I became restless to find out what makes a small lesion in the big hemisphere capable of making patient dependent and handicapped. We all know that lesion and loss of neurons is irreversible damage and the dysregulation that happens because of the lesion which is considered permanent. This made me think is lesion and dysregulation thereof is misunderstood by any chance. We know that symptoms that follow are mostly similar despite different location of lesion. We also know that dead neurons cannot act anymore. Then how lesion can be responsible for complex symptoms? Neurologists focus on diagnosis of the lesion and physiotherapists focus on the paretic muscles. Though both do their level best, but patient ends up with useless arm, walking difficulties, disability and handicap. I could not accept this at all when I put myself in the shoes of the patient. Doctors told patients that they should be happy that they have survived and it takes time to recover from stroke. Therapists tell the patient he should be happy that he is learning to move again and he can function once again. And it takes time for the paretic body to recover. All these statements makes the patient to accept the problem as inevitable. But I was not ready to accept that poor quality of life with disability, handicap and dependency for my patients for the rest of their life. I thought very deeply about complex problems like invariant synergic grouping and spasticity 
end contracture, etc. And I wondered why all stroke patients have similar symptoms when the lesion in their brain might be at different locations. I wanted to find solution so that future stroke patient does not need to suffer as the stroke victim of today and of yesteryears. I began to think and ask myself, is the lesion overrated? How can a small lesion in big hemisphere be responsible for paresis and flaccidity on one entire side of the body? Why is it not equivalent to the size of the lesion? Is pyramidal tract disruption or damage exclusively responsible for loss of voluntary control? Or is loss of voluntary control also possible due to paresis and flaccidity with inability to move? I began my journey to find the solution for stroke patients. I thought that somewhere we are goofing to understand brain following lesion. I wondered, is it our belief about lesion and loss of neurons being irreversible makes us think that following stroke, when brain is dysregulated, it is difficult to regulate it again and therefore stroke is a stroke for lifetime. I realized that lesion and loss of neurons is overrated. I thought, is it possible that lesion might be simply a catalyst seen on CT and MRI and something more implicit might be responsible why complex symptoms like hypotonia on one entire side of the body sensory motor loss, perception and cognition problems, aphasia, apraxia, ataxia, memory loss, balance and loading issues, coordination problems, oculomotor problem, dysdiadocokinesia, facial asymmetry, diachesis are from some implicit source. If this implicit, implicit source can be made explicit. It might be possible to find solution. Diachesis in cerebellum is known. Von Monaco discovered it in 1914. I began to ask myself, why diachesis would develop and why spasticity develops with passage of time? Neurorehabilitation science describes spasticity as a motor disorder characterized by velocity dependent increase in tonic stretch reflex resulting from hyper excitability of stretch reflex. Suffering from spasticity is huge and quality of life is poor. There is no treatment that cures spasticity, though some drugs do give temporary relief. I thought deeply and felt the need to know how patients describe spasticity. Most patients describe it as if his body feels stiff like a log and some describe it as if their body is imprisoned with stiffness that prevents him from moving freely. I thought, is it possible to liberate these patients from the clutches of spasticity? Can I give freedom to the body of the patient from spasticity? I began to think and rethink and think. 
I tried to move the spastic segments passively and what I experienced was huge resistance from spastic muscle not ready to give in despite applying all my strength. I could not open the fingers of a patient with spastic hand. I could not passively extend the elbow and could not bend the spastic extended knee. Nor could I stretch tight calf muscle to get foot dorsiflexion. I also experienced that though all spastic muscles offered a huge resistance to move, the segment in the opposite direction, spastic muscles were very weak in the strength. I became very curious at such a behavior of spastic muscle. I felt serious need to figure out what spasticity is in the true sense. I also wondered why some stroke patients develop it and so many do not. Why would it not appear immediately after lesion strikes? if lesion is the cause. Why would it take few days to weeks to few months to develop after stroke? I became restless to find solution for spasticity. I began to think why would brain develop resistance to movement? Does problem solver brain have any purpose behind developing spasticity. What could be the purpose of the brain? I started experimenting clinically as a clinician. I recognized that patient shows typical posture like severely spastic, stiff knee, unable to bend and foot drop with tear tightness while walking. I also saw that some very hypotonic stroke patients develop knee recurvatum and foot drop with contracture. I saw that spastic stiff knee patient while walking, standing up and climbing has his upper limb kissing the chest or hugging the abdomen. I saw that no one had swing in the arm when they walked. I also saw that no matter how much work was done on these symptoms, they persisted forever. This was alarming signal to me. I saw that grouping inflection in upper limb increased in spastic patients while climbing stairs and walking and I saw that grouping reduced and the muscles relaxed to some extent when the patient was made to lie flat in supine. I observed that the patient who took walking very seriously and was aggressive in temperament and practiced walking for hours and hours, though muscles were paretic, they developed invariant synergic grouping in upper limb and spasticity and contracture too. This was a clinic clear indication that walking was influencing the upper limb posture. I thought a lot. Then I tried hopping on one leg myself to experience what my body does. And what I saw, my arm also went into synergic grouping inflection when I was hopping. This made me think and I realized that it is physiological and not pathological for the upper limb to get inflection when one hops on one leg. I saw clearly that loading issues following stroke makes stroke patient 
use paretic leg simply as a prop with knee locking to prevent falling. I wondered how does stroke patient cope with gravity which is an invariant force that acts on the body all the time. How does brain handle gravity when one side of the body no longer can generate force? In gravitational atmosphere, brain constantly uses muscles of both sides of body as its, its tool for the automatic postural control and for the automatic safety to combat against gravity for self-safety. When half body muscles get paretic from stroke, imbalance of forces between the two sides of the body makes the brain to automatically depend on available muscle force from the good side. This is seen very clearly in patients when they use good arm and leg to sit down, to stand up and to walk and to climb. Patients control posture and control their body COM using good body. I saw that all patients perpetually excluded paretic body for the postural safety and to control the center of mass. I asked myself, why all patients of stroke excluded use of paretic body? Why all stroke patients have loading difficulties irrespective of location of lesion? Why all stroke patients depend on good body for the postural control? Is it possible that the self-organizing brain transfers the rights of safety of center of mass to the good side of body automatically in self-safety? Why all patients have difficulty in loading and weight bearing and why these issues are the way they are irrespective of location of lesion. What does increased degrees of freedom on the paretic side of the body do to the brain? Does imbalance of forces between two sides of body, paretic and non-paretic, which is united at the central axis, make brain to wait for doctors to solve the problem? Or does it act itself to solve imbalance? Why does brain develop contracture in thoracolumbar fascia? Is it to functionally bind the two sides of the body which are anatomically united at the central axis? I wondered what happens to the brain and body when the patient is made to practice standing and walking for early discharge from the hospital. Does brain and body react adversely to walking practice when the paretic weak side of the body is still unable to support, balance and propel rest of the body segments? What happens to the body center of mass from consistent use of the good hand most times of the day for the activities of daily living and for postural control too. What happens to the center of mass movement when cane or crutch are held in good hand for postural safety? What happens when efferent sensory inflow from paretic body is monotonous due to lack of movement from paresis or it is monotonous 
from invariance energy grouping. I wondered if patients understood that the toppling force of gravity acts on our body 24 hours, which makes our brain to compensate if one side of the body is paretic. It compensates that patient uses the good body all the time. This gravity which acts on the body for 24 hours, it makes it mandatory for patients to work many hours on their body. And patients need to exploit gravity instead of fearing the gravity which is toppling their body or posing threat to the center of mass of the body. Patients need to exploit gravity. I wondered about external supportive devices that helps the patient from toppling and losing balance, but does that prepare the brain to control the center of mass from within or does it make brain become defensive in self-safety? I recognized the importance of what not to do with the brain and the body when half side of body is paretic. A lot of hope is built for plasticity to help patient to recover and hope is made for neighboring neurons to take over the function and for axonal dendritic growth to happen in lacuna of the lesion. But what we know that hope remains hope and the stroke patient develops disability, dependency and handicap. I thought how about thinking beyond lesion and beyond dysregulation from the irreversible lesion. I wondered as it I wondered is it really the case that the patients forget the movements after stroke? If movements are not forgotten but are difficult because of the paresis, why do we attempt to teach movements and give motor relearning program when most movements are highly automatic and done subconsciously? I also felt strange about need to learn different tasks separately. I thought once again about how patient with stroke handled gravity when his both sides of body were available to counter gravity. That means when he was normal. And what does he do when only one good side is available? to counter the gravity. What does the brain do when patient is made to walk and climb stairs without preparing paretic segments to support balance and propel their body, rest of the body parts? Does brain automatically avoid paretic body for the postural safety? Brain being a problem solver, does it exploit other tools of the musculoskeletal system like fascia and connective tissue in self safety? I could see that therapeutic actions taken by therapist almost goes in vain and patient develops disability and dependency. This made me realize that actions by brain are more powerful over any therapeutic action. Therefore, to make the brain work as we desire in therapeutics, we need to trick the brain to do what we want by designing therapeutics that has the same goal as the brain itself. We need to make sure the therapeutic goal and goal of the brain are in tandem. I saw 
that goal in therapy is to make the patient relearn movement, complete the task and give gait training etc. Whereas goal of the brain is to prioritize self safety. I realized that brain's goal is more powerful and the goal in therapy in comparison. I also saw that compensation happened automatically and compensation also was promoted in therapeutics to complete the task. I also saw that most patients look down on the support surface and use touch for balance safety, making vision and touch to compensate for poor proprioception from the paretic muscles due to loading difficulties. I wondered what happens to fear of falling when the center of mass height gets increased above the support surface and the base of support that reduces due to loading issues when the patient is made to walk. I realized that fear of falling became worst when standing and walking in comparison to when the patient was lying and patient became more defensive in self-safety. I asked why natural recovery results in invariant synergic grouping and not voluntary control. I asked myself, is it possible that this long-standing thinking about lesion being responsible for complex symptoms needs rethinking? Could it be that lesion X as a catalyst for cerebellum on the side of paresis to get switched off to save tightly packed neurons in a small structure which is one tenth the size of the brain. Development of diachesis that is reduced metabolism and reduced blood supply to cerebellum is a clear indication that cerebellum gets switched off when lesion strikes. It is known now that cerebellum is responsible for many functions beyond balance and coordination. With its connectivity with all different cortices and subcortical structures and spinal cord. Intricate connections of cerebellum with anticipatory postural circuits in brain stem and in other parts of brain for anticipatory feet forward control is critical for safety from falling during slightest movement of center of mass. I thought why spastic muscle offer resistance to move? Why do all patients have loading and weight bearing issues? Why center of mass movement is restricted? Perhaps use of the good body for postural safety retains the center of mass on good side of the spine. Perhaps it makes anticipatory postural control on the paretic side of the body redundant. I realized why natural recovery leads to invariant synergic grouping instead of restoring voluntary control. I realized that brain in self-defense exploits spinal plasticity with interlim knowledge and interlim sensation to group many paretic muscles together invariantly in synergic grouping to give stability and to prioritize safety while standing up and walking and climbing. So it's easy to understand that the synergic grouping is not pathological as understood, but it is functional. It is the way how brain uses body 
to refrain the center of mass movement to remain within the safety limits of reduced base of support which reduces because of the paresis and because of the loading loading issues i understood that long standing understanding that brain is dysregulated due to lesion and regulating it is impossible when neurons die irreversibly this makes compensation the way to go in therapy vasa concept clearly understands that complex symptoms are not born out of dead neurons that is believed to dysregulate brain but it is brain's attempt to prioritize self safety by exploiting different tools that can help defend body com it is clearly understood that problem solver brain automatically compensates postural safety with use of good body and it automatically avoids paretic body in self safety it is also seen that the patients from developing countries learn to compensate on their own without any therapy whereas a patient from developed country learn to compensate in modern rehab facility plasticity makes them adapt to compensation adapting to compensation is negative plasticity which results in permanent disability and handicap compensation that happens by brain automatically to prioritize safety and compensation with supportive device like cane and crutch etc which is promoted in therapy for the functional goals bothered me and i asked what happens at the level of spinal cord when sensory input remains monotonous due to paresis and due to invariant grouping in paretic muscles and when anticipatory center of mass movement on the paretic side gets highly reduced in self safety i asked what happens to the spino spinal connectivity when sensory input is monotonous and compensation strategy using good body for postural control happens almost automatically to prioritize safety i realized that problem solver brain acts here and now with different strategies to solve problem of safety from falling not moving at all or restricting movements resisting movements are different defensive motor strategies cerebellar switch off opened a new window in my own brain to think of possibilities for switching on the cerebellum that can change all beliefs till date about irreversible lesion that dysregulates brain contemporary thinking that spasticity is a motor disorder in presence of upper motor neuron lesion like stroke made me very skeptical in my experience spasticity is a motor solution in self defense to restrict and refrain body center of mass within safety limits of base of support spasticity is spinal plasticity wherein interlimb knowledge and interlimb sensations helps to group many paretic muscles together invariantly to make limbs to move towards the central axis to refrain the center of mass to remain within narrow base of support from poor loading 
I wondered if cerebellum switch off results in silence in anticipatory control, especially when paretic muscles cannot control the center of mass safety and is controlled exclusively by good side of the body, retaining it on the good side of the spine. I also could not stop thinking if brain used feedback control to compensate for safety a priority. Not with feed forward anticipation, but as a feedback reflex reaction. Now, let us see consequences of uninterrupted use of the good body for postural safety and for voluntary control. Uninterrupted use of good body makes the good body a leader that support balance and propel body all the time, which makes paretic body a follower all the time. Brain exploits spinal plasticity wherein spinal motor neurons on the paretic side of the spine adapt to follow the good body side with interlimb knowledge and interlimb sensation when good side leads all the time when good body is leading all the time and the paretic body is following all the time brain takes some measures to make it easy and economical to continue to lead without exchange of dominance between two sides while walking, climbing, enduring postural change. Brain orders contracture in connective tissue and in large fascia called thoracolumbar lumbar fascia that houses many large paretic muscles of trunk. Contracture in thoracolumbar lumbar fascia helps to bind two sides of the body to functionally act as one unit so that good body can easily tow paretic body. Latissimus muscle on paretic side being automatically connected to the gluteus maximus on the good side makes latissimus to begin to contract and shorten when the patient is trained to walk. This is easily seen with naked eye with drooping of shoulder and torso. Easy to understand that latissimus shortens at every step taken to walk. It pulls arm in adduction with its insertion on the humerus that prevents the arm swing. In my clinical experience, early walking training wherein patient uses the gluteal muscle from his good leg, this pulls on the latissimus, on the paretic side, being anatomically connected to it. Every step taken may pull latissimus constantly to trigger contracture and spasticity unless and until paretic side is made able to control the center of mass automatically from within. We have seen that despite several hours of gait training, swing in the arm is not restored. Rather, it makes arm kiss and hug abdomen and may even hug chest making movements to reach out in space difficult. In my clinical experience, switching on the cerebellum is critical to re-reorganize the self-organized brain for voluntary control to emerge as a byproduct and for pre-morbid gait to emerge 
automatically. I started to think and rethink and think again and again about how to switch on the cerebellum. I made paretic segments of the body become part of specially designed posture wherein good body and gravity are capitalized to cause guarded disequilibrium and re-equilibrium such that paretic body must act here and now in self-safety a priority. Repeating this here and now strategy to control local center of mass and global center of mass using paretic segments resulted in complete disappearance of spasticity. This proved that the way to go is to switch on the cerebellum. To switch on the cerebellum, one must exploit proprioceptors from paretic muscles and joints to make proprioceptive rain shower as in a rainforest to make avalanche in descending postural motor tracks to make muscles to contract in anticipation for stability and safety thus get them stronger from within bombarding the cerebellum with consistent input from anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract repeated time and again coupled with exploitation of graviceptors and proprioceptors in specially designed postures is crucial to re reorganize self-organized brain. It is necessary to make paretic body segments responsible for local center of mass safety and global center of mass safety to put stroke patient on the road to true recovery of loss control without compensation and without development of spasticity. Spasticity can be defined as tonic stretch reflex contraction or feedback contraction in self-safety against gravity when feet forward anticipatory postural motor circuits in the brain stem gets silent from cerebellar switch off. Spasticity is not a motor disorder but is a motor solution wherein brain exploits spinal plasticity to group many paretic muscles together to restrict segmental center of mass from running out of safety limits of base of support and restricts it in self-defense by resisting movement away from central axis. The reason I am publishing this on the YouTube is that I would like to help all stroke victims suffering from spasticity in this world to get liberated from spasticity and live good quality of life with true recovery of loss control that prevents compensation. You can approach Raju Lwasa Foundation at OFF at the rate rvfindia.org. You will get all the help all for free. If you wonder why do I do this for free, then please note that I do not want money to be the barrier for anyone from reaching me. I wish that quality of life of all brain injured in the world improves so much that they can fulfill their dreams and live happily, independently, without handicap and without dependency. Thank you.